Hi, Year 12. Writing the personal statement is a, is a really challenging thing um, to do. It's really difficult to write uh, perceptively and honestly um, and competitively, really, about yourself. And it's also a really, really important part of the UCAS process. It's the thing that helps you stand out. Admissions tutors and teams look very, very carefully at your personal statement to see how you um, could join their, their university and become, become an asset to them. Um, so it's really, really important and it is a really, really difficult piece of writing to do. And I remember really struggling at it um, just a few years ago when I was going through this process. Um, and there's one thing that I was taught at the time that's always stuck with me and really helped me. And it's called the success method. And success is a mnemonic. It stands for um, six, seven different things, seven letters in success. So I want to share that with you um, today and hopefully you find it, find it useful. So the S in success stands for structure. When people think of the personal statement, they often think about, oh, what am I going to say to sound good? What are the best things that I've achieved in my life? And that's all fine. But the structure is the, the most important thing. It's got to be tight, controlled, lucid. And it's got to follow those four parts. So you open with a really sharp, snappy, um, here I am paragraph, three or four sentences maximum that says what course you want to do and why you want to do it. And in that short paragraph, you really want to share your enthusiasm and your passion and also your knowledge and expertise for that subject that you've learned. Not that you'll have all the answers, but it's it's really showing that you've got that thirst for, for learning and developing yourself as a young person. So open with a really short, sharp paragraph. Then you've got a meatier, more developed paragraph about your academic credentials what you've studied that interests you and that links to your future studies. Um, so uh, A-levels, GCSEs, things you've done within, across and outside the curriculum that shows you're someone who really enjoys and is motivated um, by academic learning, learning about books and ideas. The next paragraph, the third paragraph, is your wider interests, skills and experiences from volunteering and fundraising to um, uh, interests that you have that reflect your your character and then um, but that paragraph is not as long as the academic uh, paragraph the second paragraph the second paragraph is the most important one and then you finish with one or two sentences overall highlighting your main your main strengths and suitability as a candidate at that prospective university so the s in success is structure really really important now the u is something, um, this is the big problem in personal statements that I've read, uh, particularly in those early drafts, is personal statements are really vague. They're, they're, they're really vague. They're too vague. Students write things like, I love math. Science has always interested me. Now, the fields of math and science are ginormous. They're massive. And you've got to avoid those vague, meaningless um, statements that really mean nothing and say nothing about you as a person. You've got to use... Um, I can't really say this properly, which is embarrassing as an English teacher. The importance of specificity, specificity, being specific, using specific evidence, examples, details. In your life, you'll have millions of examples of great things you've done. And it's the, the, the real challenge is to just choose the things, a few things that really show you at your best. So be specific. Whatever you're writing in your personal statement, be specific. It doesn't mean go on for 10 lines about it, but be specific. Give specific examples, give specific details, specific evidence. So use those things. Specificity, you. The next letter is C in success. Please choose learning and experiences that are relevant to um, the course. They may be relevant to the course that you want to study, the field of learning you want to go into, but they don't all have to be. Often you see students mention experiences and they just twist it to try and fit it into their um, university to study law, to study medicine, and it's too forced and it's too obvious. It doesn't look good. So choose learning and experiences that either fit to your future progression, your subject, your area of interest, or things that reflect your character. Because universities want to know about you as a person and your character and your qualities. You know, they're not they're not looking to recruit a robot. They want a fully fledged developed human being that's going to add not just to the lectures and the seminars and the tutorials, but someone who can go and shape the student union, who can go and become an advocate for charities um, or for student rights. So remember it's not just about proving you can do the subject you want to do it's about reflecting your character so you might want to reflect things like your commitment your perseverance how you've overcome challenges your intellectual curiosity just a thing on um 
overcoming challenges we often call these red flags have a think about things that have um that you have faced in your life and just drop them in anything that's that could be seen as a barrier anything that's out of the usual anything that sets you apart someone who's overcome um difficult uh, personal maybe you've got had a difficult difficult personal background you've had specific challenges in in your personal life you don't need to go into massive detail or tell a sob story but it's really good to show your character and your perseverance by just dropping those things in. Maybe you're someone who speaks many languages, um, a great quality to have, something that universities are looking for. Um, universities are very, very diverse places and they're places that celebrate difference and, and uh, multiple languages and cultures. Um, and so they really, really want to hear about that. Um, so just back to the C. Remember, choose things that reflect your future desire, your future subjects, or your character, commitment, perseverance, intellectual curiosity, or care. The next C in success is really, really important. The, all these things are check your English. Check your English. It's got to make perfect sense. That does not mean use a thesaurus and uh, replace a perfectly good word with a word you've never heard of and then doesn't make any sense in that context. Check your English. Full stops. Capital letters, can you get a semicolon in there? Can you use a range of punctuation? Can you use the right word for the right context? Can you avoid repeat? All these things are check your English. Check your English. It's got to make perfect sense. That does not mean use a thesaurus and uh, replace a perfectly good word with a word you've never heard of and then doesn't make any sense in that context. Check your English. Full stops. Capital letters, can you get a semicolon in there? Can you use a range of punctuation? Can you use the right word for the right context? Can you avoid repeating yourself? Can you show off your vocabulary, um, but your vocabulary, not vocabulary you've stolen from um, the internet or what sounds good, because it is your personal statement, it is you. So check your English, of course check your spellings and get that punctuation in. The E in success is edit, 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 edit. Writing a personal statement is really, really it's like running a marathon. It's a real test of endurance. Your first draft is probably going to be rubbish. Mine definitely was. Your 11th draft is probably going to be a little bit better. But it will take 20 to 30 attempts. Um, think of it as a, 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 a painting that you're, that you're working on over time. It, no one does their personal statement in one go and it's perfect. Um, listen to the advice of your teachers and your tutors. Take on board everything and keep chipping away. Keep sculpting and moulding it. Keep working on it um, and it will get better every time. And so by the end, you'll be so proud. It will be you. It'll be your personal statement, but it'll be you at your best. Um, and that's really important when it comes to the, the admissions teams making Making their choices so the e in success stands for edit 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 ask everyone to look at it ask you, your, your parents your, your cousins um, your siblings your friends your family uh, your teachers get a lots and lots of different views um, and that will really enrich the process and help you build something to be to be really proud of then we move on to the last two letters. S stands for syntax. Syntax, I'm an English teacher. Um, you're probably thinking, what is syntax? It's a word we don't use anymore. But it's about the order of words in a sentence. Have a think about it. You're writing about yourself. The temptation is to start every sentence with I. I, 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 I. I do this. I do that. I am this. I am that. And it be can become very monotonous, tedious, um, robotic, I want to challenge you to start every sentence with a different word and a different type of word. So don't just start with a noun phrase, the, he, I, my learning. Try and start with an adjective. Try and start with an adverb. Start with a verb. Start with um, a connective. Keep it flowing. Just avoid starting with I. We call it the disease of I-itis. Um, maybe I shouldn't be talking about diseases, but you get the idea. Avoid starting with I or the noun phrase every time, and that will help with fluency and control. And the final S is skills and experience. You do not write a shopping list of things you've done. I did this. I've been in this group. I've got this grade. You do not need to list a shopping list of things that you've done. It's not just about what you've done. It's about what you've learned from that, what skill you've developed, what the experience you've gained. So avoid just name dropping or giving lists of lots and lots of things that you've done. Think about what you did and how that affected you or group experiences together to show how it developed you as a person. So there we have it. It's the success method. I hope you found it useful. So we've got structure, use examples, choose learning and experiences that are relevant either to the subject that you want to study or to your character.
Then check your English. Edit, 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 edit. Um, syntax, vary your sentence starters. Don't start with I every time. And finally, don't give a shopping list of things that you've done. Rather, how that has shaped you as a person. Um, good luck. I'm looking forward to reading and, and supporting you through this process, as I know we all are. And have a great virtual progression week. Take care. Goodbye.